This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, NASIO and YouTube. If you wish to support me, you can find the links below. Check it out people. I've got a bowl of water here. I'm gonna add some leaves. I'm gonna add this tree bark and I'm gonna add the secret herbal mixture. Now I'm gonna boil it for 30 minutes and then take some of this and if I claim that what I have here can run your car better than petrol or diesel or any other fuel, would you believe me? Well, that exact stunt was pulled off in the 90s. And the person who pulled it off scammed 2.27 crore rupees. That's 22.7 million rupees from the public. This is the story of that scam. My name's Pranav. You're watching Science Zoo. Let's begin. The year is 1996. Suresh, a professor of physics at the IIT Delhi, was skeptical. A man named Ramar Pillai, a high school dropout, has come all the way from a village in Tamil Nadu to demonstrate for them a herbal mixture that he had developed. One that he claims could run your car as well as petrol or diesel. Professor Suresh was very skeptical of this claim. But he couldn't really say anything against his senior, Professor N.K. Jha, who along with the Secretary of the Department of Science and Technology, V. Ramamurthy, had invited Ramar Pillai over to Delhi to demonstrate this. Professor Suresh sees Ramar take a bowl full of water to begin his demonstration. Suresh immediately makes a judgmental remark in his mind. What fuel has water as a component in it? Stop wasting my time. But as he thinks this to himself, he sees Ramar add some leaves and some secret herbal mixture and other ingredients to the boiled solution and he adds a burning sheet of paper to it. And to everyone's amazement, the solution catches fire. Wait, what? Suresh cannot believe what he just witnessed. But before he can even analyze what he's seeing, Professor Jha begins applauding and so does Ramamurthy. As far as they're concerned, the demonstration is a success. Very soon, Professor Jha's words of appreciation for the man begins appearing in the papers, along with other accolades from all over the country. At a time when fuel prices were rupees 35 per litre, Ramar biofuel would cost something like rupees 10 per litre. This was game-changing, something that could turn the entire fossil fuel industry on its head and place India at the top. The man who had invented a fuel that some said was 10 times more efficient than regular petrol was regarded by many as India's Newton. The Tamil Nadu government immediately helped him by setting up a factory on free land and financing the operation. But there were some people like Professor Suresh who were skeptical of this claim. And it would be soon that Ramar would get called to IIT Madras once again for a demonstration of his fuel. And this time he wouldn't be so successful. Finally, I'm using this shelf actively as part of a video. Now I've got some props here. Uh, I'll place hydrogen atom there, carbon atom here. I've got their oxides, CO2 and H2 over there. I'll tell you why I've kept them at these particular levels. But first, let me ask you, what is a fuel? A fuel is something that can burn and give us energy. And what is burning? Chemical combination with oxygen to give their respective oxides. Now tell me something that can burn. Wood, paper, plastic, coal, petrol, diesel, natural gas, your LPG gas cylinder, that has something that can burn. Now they all contain various levels of unoxidized carbon and hydrogen in them, along with other atoms that can also burn and give their respective oxides. Now we know what that X and O M is. These are atoms like phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen, etc. Now I'll tell you why I kept them at these levels specifically. What's happening during a chemical combination with oxygen? Oxygen. Let's take hydrogen for example. In hydrogen, the HH bond breaks and forms an HO bond in H2O. And the difference between the energy levels, the HH bond is up here and the HO bond is down there. And that difference in energy level is what gives us the energy of burning. That same thing applies to carbon also and other elements. This difference in energy between carbon and its oxide is what gives us burning energy. 
carbon and hydrogen are the elements that give us the most energy that's why most foss fossil fuels are compounds of carbon and hydrogen in fact i should actually keep hydrogen way up there like three times higher than carbon because hydrogen gives us a lot of energy but whenever there are other elements involved that decreases the amount of energy you can see that the energy level difference between uh, other elements and their oxides are actually a bit lower and that's why when you have something like petroleum it must first undergo a refining process to remove all the impurities and try to guess what the worst impurities are oxides because if you have an oxide it can't burn any further right there are specific cases where that can happen like if you have carbon monoxide you can add one more oxygen to get carbon dioxide and that gives you some energy but in almost every other case once you have an oxide it can't burn it can't you can't extract any more energy from it now why did i go into this whole tangent to show where oxides lie in this whole energy hierarchy they lie here in the bottom there is literally no energy that you can get out of an atom that is already oxidized let's go back to the rambert pillai story and look at what he did he got leaves and tree bugs as ingredients all plant parts will have some percentage of water content in it it's like our bodies we have some 60% water the same goes for the herbal concoction that rambert was using plant extracts will contain water which is an oxide which won't burn and if that wasn't enough he added all the stuff to water not to mention all the other impurities that may be in there so is herbal fuel possible fuel the kind that runs cars needs highly concentrated hydrocarbons to be efficient if you have a way of extracting that from plants yeah sure herbal fuel is possible but that's not what ramar did is it my point is whatever product ramar got had a significant content of water in it and had to be some low grade substance nowhere near the fuel qualities of petrol or diesel so now the question remains how exactly did ramar get the solution to burn so well like fuel in his demonstration Ramar Pillai gets a request for a demo again this time from IIT Madras Ramar high on confidence because his IIT Delhi demonstration was a success accepts the request it has to be noted that professors like V Ganeshan from IIT Madras had previously thought that Ramar's invention was quote and quote impressive they still wanted a demo from him maybe the scientists wanted to make sense of what they saw using their science Ramar thought Fast forward a few more days and Ramar is at IIT Madras giving his demo. By now he had given hundreds of demos that he was well practiced at what to do in what sequence. While Ramar is mixing the herbs, one of the professors grew suspicious of the stirrer he is using. The stirrer was a glass or metal rod that was sometimes hollow. Ramar would insist that he use his own metallic stirrer instead of the glass stirrer that was provided. The professor notices something oily oozing from the end of the stirrer. Upon closer examination, he notices that it was filled with some kind of liquid. This turns out to be a mixture of petroleum products. This is what enabled Ramar to burn his concoction so effortlessly. His trick was finally revealed. There was no herbal fuel. This was just normal petroleum. Many more opportunities and demonstrations are given to Ramar to prove his case, but he fails to do so and the scientific committee stops taking him seriously. But even when the tricks of a fraud like Ramar are debunked, there will always be some anti-science folks who will find justifications for why scientists are the actual villains in the story. They need to find some conspiracy theory angle that can fit their narrative. Like in this case, there were people claiming that scientists were jealous of a person from a lower economic rung that was challenging the exploitative petroleum industry they found a way to make it seem like ramar was a victim in the story ramar even though his fraud had been exposed used this support to do two things one to get the tn government to continue financing him and to continue his business of selling his fuel to the public but the good times were about to end for ramar the year is 2000 a case is filed with the cba against him and an investigation is conducted cba's report concludes that ramar's biofuel was a mixture of petroleum products like toluene naphtha etc that could potentially damage vehicles with the help of some of his associates ramar 
had stolen these from refineries and sold as fuel to the public cheating them and making a revenue of 2.27 crore rupees by selling it as something herbal ramar however manages to stay out on bail for 16 more years after the cbi investigation but his supporters investors and customers lose trust in him he may not have been behind bars but he lost his business and income but this wasn't the end of a scamming base In 2010 while this CBI case was still pending Ramar resurfaced again this time under a different name Punnu Pillai Ramar with a new fuel the mix was different but the claim was still the same a 5 rupee per liter fuel that could run your car but unfortunately for Ramar he had built a reputation for himself because of the scam he pulled in the late 90s there were no investors willing to back him In 2016 the court finally convicted him and his associates for both cheating the public and stealing petroleum products. They got 3 years in prison and a fine of rupees 30,000 each. The amounts are nowhere near what they cheated the public for but there you have it. That's how the story ends. I've left sources down below if anyone wants to read and learn more. But one lesson we can all learn from the Ramar story is this. Sometimes the pride for our nation combined with wishful thinking behind slogans like India's new tin, the desire to have a world changing invention come out of India, might bias our own judgment to a point where we might be taken advantage of by scammers like Ramar. This combined with the bias that we all have to support the underdog can be exploited very easily. All someone has to do is to play the underdog. Another thing that I often see is a mistrust of science. This may be a result of people having bad experiences at the hands of industries like healthcare or insurance or the petroleum industry in this story and their greed for money. While these industries may be a result of science, they're not the same as science. When the scientific community examines a claim and concludes something, it's not fair to instantly believe that it's because of some vested interest. And this might lead to scams like the one pulled by Ramar not being exposed when it could have been. If you like my content, it would be really awesome if you can support me because that becomes my main source of income. You can give me a one time support using one of these options or give me continued support using one of these options for which you will get perks that you see on your screen. One of those perks is a private WhatsApp group that you get to join. where we do stuff like this one of our members is an astronomer and so we have amateur astronomy sessions over zoom call so if you are interested in things like that do join i want to thank my highest tier supporters on patreon and youtube if you support me in my highest tiers you can get your name displayed on the video like this if you like this video you might also like this one on how an indian pharma company scammed its customers and tried to profit big time I'll see you in the next one till then remember science is dope